Good morning. Welcome to virtual worship again at Advent Lutheran in Murfreesboro, Tennessee. Today in the church year, it is the fifth Sunday in Lent and a season where we're meditating on how God has constantly reached out to us and established covenants with us. I'm David Hood, Advent Center and Pastor of the Call Committee candle back here is burning, reminding us to pray for the committee as they interview potential candidates to be the next pastor at Advent. But now let us enter into worship with a gathering song led by our Encounter Band.
Blessed be the Holy Trinity, one God, the keeper of the covenant, the source of steadfast love, our rock and our redeemer. Amen. God hears us when we cry and draws us close in Jesus Christ. Let us return to the one who is full of compassion. Fountain of living water, pour out your mercy over us. Our sin is heavy and we long to be free. Rebuild what we have ruined and mend what we have torn. Wash us in your cleansing flood. Make us alive in the spirit to follow in the way of Jesus as healers and restorers of the world you so love. Amen. Beloved, God's word never fails. The promise rests on grace. By the saving love of Jesus Christ, the wisdom and power of God, your sins are forgiven and God remembers them no more. Journey in the way of Jesus. Amen. Let us pray. O oh God, rich in mercy, by the humiliation of your Son, you lifted up this fallen world and rescued us from the hopelessness of death. Lead us into your light, that all our deeds may reflect your love through Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. And now for a few announcements. The big news this week is that we are going to start moving towards indoor, in-person worship. The phase-in will begin on Easter with an outdoor service here at the church. So uh, instead of wearing Easter bonnets, we will be sporting Easter masks uh, while we keep our distance from each other. Uh, on that day, we will have two communion stations uh, we will be giving you individual uh, communion cups with a wafer already wrapped. Uh, it's something that we can purchase. Uh, we'll have two communion stations, one outside for those who still are not comfortable with inside spaces. And then we will have another one here at the altar, uh, but it will be controlled. But more details will be forthcoming. We know that not everyone is ready to be in groups, even with precautions. So, as we've done all year, the service will be available online, uh, as we've been doing, and uh, that is something that's going to continue even after things settle down after the pandemic. Again, I remind you to check out the new online bulletin so you can follow along with worship today. That address is theadventchurch.updates.church. And go ahead and learn how to use this resource because we will be keeping this bulletin format when we gather in person again. This coming Wednesday will be our final midweek Lenten devotional. Join us on Zoom at 7 p.m. And for those who desire, a brief communion service will be offered. We remind our Sunday school children to mail back the mosaic Alleluia butterfly pieces. We haven't received very many yet. And remember, when you do mail it back, put a second postage stamp on the envelope that was provided in the packet. As I shared with you last week, in June of 2019, uh, the congregation approved a $30,000 expenditure to upgrade our audiovisual capabilities. Like I said earlier, uh, we're going to continue creating an audio uh, visual of each worship service uh, because there are many who will not be able to worship and we want to offer that online. Well, now there was a stipulation that the team 
had to have the money in hand before they spent it. So to tell you how uh, the audiovisual team is going about this and how they're saving us money uh, and how they need some of your money, of course, of course. Uh, I'd like to go back to uh, Molly Bolin, our media ministry coordinator, to share with us what the team is thinking. Hi, I'm Molly, and this is a quick update from the audiovisual team. Where we are and where we need to be. A quick reminder of where we were when we entered the pandemic and the shutdown, and where we need to be to be able to be back in person for worship. In June 2019, we held a congregational meeting to approve the expenditure of $35,000 to upgrade the audiovisual stuff in the sanctuary. That was to be provided by an external vendor to be doing all the installations. This was only going to happen if we had the dedicated funds on hand. We'd raised just over $5,000 when both of our projectors in the sanctuary failed in late February. We then purchased 85-inch Samsung TV monitors to hang in the sanctuary. But before we could get those installed, COVID-19 happened, we shut down and we moved to online worship. We began online worship using the Mevo camera system, which we had been using for in-person worship. This allowed us to provide a live stream worship similar to what we had been doing in person. We quickly realized that while the Mevo was really good for in-person worship at the time, it wasn't how we wanted to continue moving forward for online worship. So that's when we switched to pre-recorded to premiere our YouTube and Facebook videos for worship. This allowed us to add pre-recorded music from the encounter band, as well as the choir. Now, without trying to rush back into worship during the pandemic, it's time to start planning for an in-person worship service. Now you may be asking yourself, Molly, why do we need to continue to have an online worship if we're going to be in person soon? That's a great question. Returning to normal will be a journey. We'll be worshiping with limited attendance for quite some time. Not all people will be able to return to worship. Those who are immunocompromised may not want to return to worship for quite some time, so they need to have an online option to worship with us. We've not only maintained our worship engagement online, we've actually grown. And unlike so many other churches, we've also maintained our giving. To continue to maintain worship online and giving, we need to put out a quality online worship. And this is how we plan to do that. The AV Tech team met earlier this year to create a plan on how to move forward. And we had a few goals in mind. We wanted to look for savings from the $35,000 from the original plan without sacrificing the quality that we could have in person. We wanted these upgrades to be able to give a high quality online presence. We wanted to be able to maintain a high quality presence online while also transitioning to have a high quality in-person service. We created a phased approach to allow implementation of these audiovisual upgrades as we have the funds available. Now for a quick clarification on the online services. We're looking to provide the in-person, encounter service, and traditional service online. The new AV upgrades will allow us to do this and live stream both services at high quality. This won't be an entirely new service. This will be an opportunity to offer our in-person service to online worshipers. At the February council meeting, the AV team presented a reworked proposal. All of the work will be performed internally by our own tech team. This phased approach to allow implementation as funds are raised while minimizing rework. These added tools for continued quality online presence as we return to in-person and a new plan with significant savings. Additional beyond the screens costs only $15,000, saving us nearly $20,000 while adding functionality. This previous plan didn't include video upgrades. Now this is the part where you guys come in. We already have $3,500 in the AV fund. We need to raise an additional $11,429 in order to complete this plan and move forward with a smooth transition back to in-person worship. I hope you guys will consider giving. Uh, these audiovisual upgrades will be a great addition to in-person and online worship services. And I will see you guys hopefully in person soon. Well, thanks, Molly. This church is our spiritual anchor. Please strengthen and bolster our ministry because your offerings will provide strength and hope both now and in our future. And it's real important that everyone keep up and give as they are able as you look to calling a new pastor and moving a pastor here and all of that. We lift our voices, 
We lift our hands, we lift our lives up to you. We are an offering. Lord, use our voices. Lord, use our hands. Lord, use our lives. They are yours. We are an offering. All that we have, all that we are, all that we hope to be, we give to you, we give to you. We lift our voices, we lift our hands, we lift our lives up to you. We are an offering, we are an offering. And as we come to our prayers of intercession for this week, uh, we realize bad weather has uh, moved through the country once again, and we're particularly aware of those the weather that came through the South uh, the other night. So today we begin by encouraging everyone to lift up those who were affected this past week, as well as those who continue to seek order in the midst of chaos that was created in their lives weeks and even months ago. Darlene Cummel is now set to have back surgery on Easter Monday, April 8th. Please keep her in your prayers. Cheryl Herberg is at a skilled nursing facility, Richland Place in Nashville, for two to four weeks of physical therapy. We join her in praying that this will finally be a means to the end of her difficulties. We continue to pray for Steve Miller, who's home recovering from major heart surgery. We hear he's doing pretty good and walking and begins rehab, I believe, next week. We also pray for Teresa Mulgren as doctors treat her anemia. Chris Kokomuller thanks everyone for prayers for her son, Scott, who was hospitalized last week with a suspected heart attack. Well, he's home doing well, and heart attack was ruled out. So that was a relief for Chris. Well, we come to some more COVID information. Uh, Denise and John Collins have tested positive for COVID. Now, it's real baffling because they have been extremely careful this entire year. They'd already received their first shot. Well, thankfully, their symptoms are mild. Uh, we pray for a quick recovery and we pray that this will not jeopardize their second vaccine. And Heather Roberts asks for prayers for Scott's cousin, Jeff, who has COVID and was put on a ventilator last week. Doesn't sound good. Remember everyone, the pandemic is not over. Leading us in prayer today will be Leanne Maxwell. Relying on the promises of God, we pray boldly for the church, the world, and all in need. You wash us through and through and remember our sin no more. Make your church a community of forgiveness throughout the world. Give your people courage to forgive. Through them, show the world new possibilities. Bless ministries of repentance and reconciliation. Hear us, O oh God, your mercy is great. You fill the earth from tiny grains of wheat to the mighty thunder with your presence, and you call us to attend to your will for all creation. Grant weather that prepares the soil for seeds, protect all from the violent storms, flooding, and wildfires. Hear us, O oh God, your mercy is great. You promise to write your law on our hearts. Guide citizens throughout the world to shape communities and reflect your mercy, justice, and peace, and give them creativity to work for the welfare of all. Hear us, O oh God, your mercy is great. You sustain us with your bountiful spirit 
Restore the joy of all who need to know your presence. Those who are lonely or feel unforgiven. Those who need healing of mind or body. Those who are dying and all who grieve. Hear us, O God, your mercy is great. Jesus calls us to follow him in life and death. Empower this congregation in discipleship. Equip children and teachers in Sunday school, confirmation, and learning ministries. Give us your truth and wisdom and teach us to follow Jesus. Hear us, O oh God. Your mercy is great. In the cross of Christ, your name is glorified. We praise you for those who have given us words to worship you, especially Thomas Cranmer. With all those who have died in Christ, bring us into life everlasting. Hear us, O oh God. Your mercy is great. We entrust ourselves and all our prayers to you, O oh, faithful God, through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Let us now wish for one another the peace of God that passes all understanding. And at some point today, text the peace to some of your family and friends. The peace of Christ be with you always. And also with you. And also with you. And also with you. Reading from the book of Jeremiah today will be Melanie Saylor. And reading our gospel for today is David Becker. By the way, David has such a deal for all of us. We get to wash windows here at the church. You can wash outside or inside. And I don't think there's anything that would prevent you from washing both inside and outside. Glass cleaner will be supplied. You bring your equipment and coffee and donuts will be provided. You know, come to think of it, I bet Melanie Saylor, who I said is reading from Jeremiah, I bet she'd make the same offer to people who would come to her house. Eh, you might try her. A reading from Jeremiah chapter 31, verses 31 through 34. The days are surely coming, says the Lord, when I will make a new covenant with the house of Israel and the house of Judah. It will not be like the covenant that I made with their ancestors when I took them by the hand to bring them out of the land of Egypt, a covenant that they broke, though I was their husband, says the Lord. But this is the covenant that I will make with the house of Israel after those days, says the Lord. I will put my law within them, and I will write it on their hearts. And I will be their God, and they shall be my people. No longer shall they teach one another or say to each other, Know the Lord, for they shall all know me. From the least of them to the greatest, says the Lord, for I will forgive their iniquity and remember their sin no more. Word of God, word of life. And thanks be to God. Return to the Lord your God, for he is gracious and merciful, slow to anger and abounding in steadfast love. The Gospel according to John, chapter 12, verses 20 to 33. Now among those who went up to worship at the festival were some Greeks. They came to Philip, who was from Bethsaida in Galilee, and said to him, Sir, we wish to see Jesus. Philip went and told Andrew, and then Andrew and Philip went and told Jesus. Jesus answered them, The hour has come for the Son of Man to be glorified. Very truly, I tell you, unless a grain of wheat falls into the earth and dies, it remains a single grain. But if it dies, it bears much fruit. 
those who love their life lose it, and those who hate their life in this world will keep it for eternal life. Whoever serves me must follow me, and where I am, there will my servant be also. Whoever serves me, the Father will honor. Now my soul is troubled, and what should I say? Father, save me from this hour? No, it is for this reason that I have come to this hour. Father, glorify mine, glorify your name. Then a voice came from heaven. I have glorified it, and I will glorify it again. The crowd standing there heard it and said that it was thunder. Others said, an angel has spoken to him. Jesus answered, this voice has come for your sake, not mine. Now it is the judgment of this world. Now the ruler of this world will be driven out. And I, when I am lifted from the earth, will draw all people to myself. He said this to indicate the kind of death he was to die. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, O Christ. Well, it's time for our children's sermon mystery box. And by the way, the 845 mystery box is somewhere, and I think it's at somebody's house. And if you have it, please contact me because I need you to do something very special for me. Okay? All right, but well, we've been using the 1045 box for a whole year now. And down here, I have a couple of pictures. Look at this first picture. It says, God loves you. Well, now that's something you already know. You hear that all the time, don't you? Well, now, if you were listening real careful to when Miss Saylor was reading from Jeremiah earlier, um, she told us that God was going to write on our hearts. You see how love seems to be written on this heart? And the same is true for us. God writes love on our hearts. And that, that reminded me of a wonderful uh, song that we used to sing at Bible school and at church camp and all. Uh, you may have heard it, but you know, all my songs are real old. But... All right, so I want you to sing with me. The words are going to come up on the screen. All right, ready? I've got the joy, 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 joy down in my heart. Now, when we get to this part, you're supposed to yell, where? Okay, where? And I'm going to ask Molly, my congregation of one back there, if you will do the honors of yelling out, where? Okay, and I'm going to start it a little higher because that was getting kind of low, you know. Mm. I've got the joy, 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 joy down in my heart. Where? Down in my heart. Where? Down in my heart. I've got the joy, 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 joy down in my heart. Where? Down in my heart to stay. Isn't that neat? To have joy in our heart makes us happy, huh? And, and why do we have such joy in our heart? Well, well, here's the second verse, ready? I've got the love of Jesus, love of Jesus down in my heart. Where? Down in my heart. Where? Down in my heart. I've got the love of Jesus, love of Jesus down in my heart. Where? Down in my heart to stay. Right, and it stays there. It stays there. And there are times when you wonder, does anybody love me? Well, yes. Just look into your heart. Jesus always loves us. Let's pray. Dear God. Dear God. Thank you for being with us always. Thank you for being with us always. And thank you for coming into our hearts. And thank you for coming into our hearts. Just as you make us happy, just as you make us happy, may we share your love with others. May we share your love with others. In Jesus' name we pray. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen.
Several years ago, I read about a dad who wrote this about his daughter. When my youngest daughter was three, she was a handful and was known to do things like compulsively lie, randomly go up to her sister and punch her in the face, and rip up books and toys and other valuables just for fun. It, it required his wife and, and him to do a lot of correcting. But then something changed. One night as the dad was putting the daughter to bed, he lay down beside her and he asked her how she felt. And she said, cherished. Did he hear right? He had never even heard her say that word. So he asked again how she felt. And she said, loved. This week we come to the fifth and the last covenant between God and the people of God that we're considering this Lenten season. So as they say at the beginning of many TV programs, previously at virtual worship, and then we see clips from the others, yeah, and we would see clips of Noah, the ark, and the rainbow, remember? Uh, we'd see a clip of an old childless couple, Sarah and Abraham, and God's promise of many descendants like the stars, the Ten Commandments outlining how we are to relate to God and to one another. And then last week, how the people were reminded that God is the healer when they looked up at that bronze serpent on a pole. But you notice all four of those covenants are external. They're very different from what God is doing today. Today, the prophet Jeremiah speaks of a new covenant between God and the people. This covenant with God goes a totally new and deeper direction. God says, I will put my law within them and I will write it on their hearts and I will be their God and they shall be my people. You know, this portion of the book of Jeremiah is in a section called the Book of Consolations. You see, uh, many of the people of God needed consoling because they were in a foreign land after having been conquered and humiliated. So these words from God through the prophet were comforting and hopeful. But you see, even if God's people were restored to the land from which they had been taken, even if God's people were experiencing prosperity and joy, and even if God's people were totally focused on God's love again, that would not be enough. Something must change within the people themselves. Something must change within us. Here in Jeremiah, the people are told that God is going to write on our hearts and permanently seal the covenant inside of us. This covenant is not written on tablets of stone like the Ten Commandments or only reminding us when we see a rainbow, etc., we are most ready to hear today's words from Jeremiah when our own efforts are exhausted. Yes, when we are weary of an inner turmoil, we're ready to hear Jeremiah speak God's words to us. When we are weary of a broken relationship and the uncertainty of trusting others, we are ready to hear Jeremiah speak God's words to us. When we are weary of our own 
intermittent relationship with God, sometimes close and sometimes far away, we are ready to hear Jeremiah speak God's words to us. If we have tried to shake off a bad habit, or we're, or we're tired of trying to fix everything we do not like about ourselves, we are ready to hear Jeremiah speak God's words to us. And if we really listen to those words, we find ourselves saying, maybe even singing, create in me a clean heart, O God, and renew a right spirit within me. Create in me a clean heart, O God, and renew a right spirit within me. And when we are quiet, we hear God whispering to us, how do you feel? And we finally say, cherished. And for good measure, God asks again, how do you feel? And we say, loved. You know, as uh, Joe and I were sitting in our car for an hour this past Tuesday, going through all of the uh, process of, uh, of answering questions, etc., so we could get our second vaccination, I started thinking about how, how the covenant that I was working on for a sermon for today was a lot like what I was experiencing sitting there in the car. That vaccination was nothing that I could have ever provided for myself. No, I was dependent on others. And all that I needed to do was to receive it and be grateful for it. What a new lease on life I was feeling and still feeling as a result of finally receiving the second vaccination. Although we're still going to wear masks, we're still going to keep our distance. There are a lot of things we don't know. But, but, that made me really understand a little better the covenant that God talks to us about today the covenant of love that comes from outside of us, from our Heavenly Father into our hearts. Yes, that's a wonderful new lease on life that is affirmed daily through our baptisms. As God reminds us, you are mine. Amen.
I believe in God, the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, God's only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended to the dead, and on the third day he rose again. He ascended into heaven. He is seated at the right hand of the Father. And he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. Who is this King of glory that pursues me with his love and haunts me with each hearing of his softly spoken word? My conscience a reminder of forgiveness that I need. Who is this King of glory who offers it to me? Who is this King of Angels, O oh, blessed Prince of Peace, feeling things of heaven and all its mystery? My spirit's ever longing for His grace in which to stand. Who is this King of Glory, Son of God and Son of Man? King of glory with strength and majesty wisdom beyond measure the gracious King of kings Lord of earth and heaven the creator of all things which is King of glory he's everything to me Precious Jesus, Lord Almighty, the King of my heart, the King of glory. His name is Jesus, precious Jesus, Lord Almighty, the King of my heart, the King of glory.